What is going on everybody and welcome to part four of the Air Hockey with Robotic Arm series. In this tutorial, what we're gonna be covering is how to take this robotic arm and now that we know where the puck is and we can generally know where the arm is or at least tell the arm where to go, um, how could we actually play air hockey? Now this is just going to be a kind of proof of concept idea at this stage. Uh, I, this won't be the greatest logic ever, but basically what I'd, what I'd like us to do is take, you know, we know what the arm's range is. It goes, for, let's say the Y, goes from a negative 220 to a positive 220. So we could take that range, and then if we know where the puck is on the playing field, we could say, okay, the puck is at, you know, 80% um, Y. Well, we could send the arm to its 80% Y position. So we could always, even as the puck is coming down, we can always just kind of like match the puck. And then once the puck crosses over a certain X threshold, let's say, we could attempt to strike the puck. Okay, so then we just kind of go forward and back and that's it. So the first uh, version of this that I came up with uh, worked in the following way. So first of all, we uh, import the, the API and all that, and then also time because we're gonna use it. And then I created the value for the arm Y max because we, uh, we're gonna need that one. Then uh, we need to access the arm as we always have. So I uh, have this block here where with the whole COM4 permission error nonsense that we were getting. Uh, oh, and then also after that, we'll also go ahead and get the device info. We're gonna set the pump to true. And then we're also gonna set a nice starting position. Um, the pump, helps to hold on to the little striker, but it's not ideal. I, I'm not sure if I'm gonna use, there's also the little gripper thing. I might change to using the gripper rather than the pump, uh, but it's actually very challenging because you, you want like a perfect amount of force being applied downward to the little striker. If you have too much force, you're gonna lose it. Like you're gonna drop the striker. Um, and if you have too little force, the puck actually just goes right underneath it. And I've had that happen a lot. So it's actually, I'm having a very difficult time finding a nice sweet spot there. I wish there was almost like some sort of pressure, because that's how you play it. Like when you play air hockey, you know how hard you should be pressing that striker down as you move around, whereas the arm just has no idea. So, so that's actually become quite a, a challenge. But I, I'm wondering if I actually don't use the suction cup and instead use that little gripper. It, it might actually make a whole lot more sense. So um, I'll probably move to that, but I think we'll I'll at least get through this uh, tutorial doing it this way. So anyways, we set the pump to true. Um, sometimes it detects that it got it and then sometimes it doesn't. Now the other thing that we're gonna go ahead and do, let me think, uh, so we access this, we go through. Um, so in the other code, I actually have it tracking when it recently took a swing uh, because like if it attempts to hit the puck, but the puck is in some other location, um, it'll almost always immediately attempt based on our logic. So I had a little bit of a counter that I just made that basically if it just, if it just swung at the puck, don't swing again immediately. So, so that was kind of the idea there. Now, coming down to the actual logic here, uh, let me just, let's see. So after the X and Y average, we print them out. We don't really need to print those anymore. So then what I did is get the actual percentage of the, you know, where the puck is located. So we want to know the height and width of the actual image after it's been cropped. So we just grab the shape of that and that shape returns the height, the width and channels. So we grab that and then we get the X and Y positions relatively uh, as a percentage. And then we're just multiplying them by 100 here. So it's a in full percentage. Um, then we're going to print those out. No problem. And then to calculate the Y location, um, I think I'll actually write this one out since it has a lot of variables. So let's just say desired arm Y. And I'm gonna say that's equal to whatever the puck Y location is. To, we're gonna divide it by 100 again um, to get it into a value that we actually are hoping for. Um, so we wanna take that, right? So we want that, that percentage in decimal form. 
Then we want to take that, multiply it by uh, the the arm y max, but we don't want to necessarily multiply that by 220, right? Because the actual range itself is actually twice of whatever the y max is, because it goes into the negatives as well. So we're actually going to multiply arm y max by two. So we're going to say we actually want that percentage, right? So we want that percent times whatever that y, double the y max. And then when we're all done, we subtract arm, well, I can just use this, arm y max from it. So it's back into the whole negative 220 to positive 220. But in order to apply the percentage to that range, this is the way I'm doing it. I'm sure there's a more elegant way. Uh, I just don't know it. <laughs> so anyway. Uh, so then what we're going to do is we'll just set the position. So I'm just going to copy that too, so paste. So then we're just saying the desired y position, just so we can see that that's a, a number that we expect. It's, again, it should be between negative 220 and positive 220. If that's not a value that we're seeing there, we have a problem. Also, we're going to calculate since the last time that we made uh, any swing, and we're just going to keep outputting that just so I can see that too for debugging purposes. Now, if the puck's position is at greater than, right, because this one, again, they're in whole numbers, not decimal percentage. So if the puck's uh, position is greater than 80, what do we want to do? Well, what we're going to want to do here is basically um, take a swing at the actual puck. But we also want to make sure the time since we last swung is more than 20 questions ago, basically. <laughs> Because it's not really 20 frames necessarily. It is 20 frames, but we don't have like a steady frame rate in this case. Um, so it's just 20. <laughs> 20 units. Um, yeah. Okay. So then it will take a swing, uh, and that's it. And we're using speed of the whole 1 million and all that. So this was basically the exact, the, you know, the first example of uh, the program. So I'm going to wait. Hopefully it will come on. There it goes. At least reset itself. Hopefully you can hear it. I'm going to go plug in the board and kind of fix the puck a little bit. Um, just a second. OK, then let's pick that region here to here. Good enough. Enter. And for some reason, it seems to kind of time out from time to time. I'm not actually certain why. I think it's actually the arm is holding us up. I'm not 100% on that, but I think it's actually the arm. So you'd want to tweak the timeout. But anyways, let me hit this puck a little bit. It's in an unfortunate location for us. See, I think the arm is timed out again. And now it's just getting in our way. Oh, the other thing I need to do, I'm sorry, nobody can see the arm. How dumb. And it's timed out again. So we definitely want to time out the, uh, <laughs> uh, okay, rather than waste everybody's time, let me go to a tweet I posted of, let's see if I can find it. of this model running because it does have a couple of issues oh it's actually not it's on youtube need that okay so this was it and as you can see first of all it's kind of slow and even at its best strike it doesn't even quite get to, to to the end location that we're actually hoping for but it's still actually you know it follows the puck as it comes around um, and then the puck got stuck there. Um, and that was me actually hitting the puck there. That's why it was moving so fast. But it just kind of follows the puck around and then tries to take a swing at the puck from time to time. So this one clearly is not the most ideal. Um, <laughs> it's too slow and it would never score on an enemy because it just doesn't hit. And so because of that, it's actually kind of forced us to look a little deeper into um, into the API and getting this thing to run a little quicker. So in the next tutorial, I'm gonna to touch briefly on that as far as what we had to go through. And then we're gonna to try to make a couple of changes here as far as getting the arm to actually 
uh, go a little faster, and then also I'll get the uh, display of the frame so everybody can kind of see it rather than me having to open up a video. Anyways, uh, that's it up to this point, kind of pretty crude logic, and the next tutorial will still retain that fairly crude logic. It's just hopefully we're going to be a little quicker next time. So anyways, uh, if you've got questions, comments, concerns, whatever, suggestions, uh, feel free to leave them below. If you want to support the content, Python permanent and slash support. Otherwise, I will see you in the next video uh, where we hopefully speed up this arm just a little bit.